guess the first piece of advice or thing that I would sort of, what I feel is most important to talk about uh, is the notion that a PhD is a platform on which all sorts of things that can be built. Uh, I knew fairly early on in my PhD that I didn't want to be a professor and I didn't want to go the postdoc um, route afterwards. Uh, and really geared my efforts and, and the projects, the types of projects I was involved in during my PhD because of that. Um, a PhD allows you, or being in a PhD program allows you to get your foot in so many doors, uh, be they programs or organizations or even just different um, fields of study that are not specifically sort of covered by the graduate program you're in. Um, the label of being a PhD student or candidate just implies that you're in a position where you're looking to learn about things and obviously there's some merit or capacity associated with that, so you're, you're able to do this in a certain way. Uh, and this was absolutely prevalent in a number of projects I did during my PhD, uh, and even extended to things like Craigslist ads. I find that people would very much, if I included my signature saying I was a PhD student, would be very receptive to interacting with PhD students because somehow we were seen as uh, um, yeah, intelligent or uh, responsible and all these different things that are associated with professional programs. Um, so the extracurriculars I got involved in during my PhD were numerous and quite diverse. Um, a lot of them centered around uh, my own passion for communication and uh, a desire to interact with people more than what was facilitated by uh, bench research. Um, science communication is sort of a, a general uh, discipline or term you can use to uh, describe this. Uh, that extended from doing a lot of high school outreach and starting a um, high school outreach program here in Vancouver called Stem Cell Talks, which I ran for four years. Uh, where I was interacting with students and gathering together different experts to teach students about stem cell research, uh, to public speaking in general and just trying to uh, get my voice out and speak about science in as many forms as possible. Uh, social media was a big um, area that I've, or an area that I became very interested in. Um, looking at Twitter as a tool for scientists on how to promote ourselves and uh, extend our network into areas that we wouldn't be able to do just individually was something I got very interested in. It actually transitioned in the last two years of my PhD to be something I ended up teaching and running workshops on, teaching various scientific organizations how they can use Twitter um, or other social media tools essentially to promote their brand and get the information that they need to get out, out there. Um, the final component and one of the bigger ones was uh, video and animation work. Uh, the passion for that really started when I showed up here at UBC and uh, Genome BC, our provincial genomics uh, body, had a film festival called Gene Screen BC. The goal being to get scientists and filmmakers to come together and make uh, video pieces that would engage and excite the public about genetics. I thought this was an awesome idea. I didn't know anything about filmmaking and just jumped in uh, and made my first short film in the summer of 2010. Uh, it was very amateur. Uh, the title is Epigenetic Landscapes. You can look it up, it's on YouTube, and you will see that it's very amateur. Uh, but it really sort of showed me the, the, the idea that when you do things that are different from other people, that science suddenly it creates this brand and identity around you that suddenly when I was talking with people, I could talk about my science or I could talk about the film that I had made. And that really led to a lot of other opportunities. Uh, I've made four short films now and transitioned from film work into animation uh, in recent years. Um, in 2012, I founded a small animation studio here in Vancouver with another postdoc called InfoShots Animation, and that really became uh, a defining sort of experience over the, the few years after that, uh, and has led to the position that I have at Stanford now, and absolutely was a big factor in uh, going through the interviews with management consulting firms as evidence that I'm someone with an entrepreneurial spirit that likes to sort of engage uh, with different ideas um, through this sort of lens of science communication.